Welcome to Vermont Artists and Authors, where we interview great storytellers and artists from the amazing Green Mountain State. I am your host, Barney Smith of StoryComic.com, and we're excited to have with us the internationally acclaimed and highly talented co-creator behind Blue Berry and Pancakes and Barb the Last Berserker, Dan Abdo. Hey, Barney. Thanks so much for having me. Real, yeah. Real here. You represent the trifecta of everything that I, I interview. I interview Vermont artists and authors, children's book artists and cre creators, and also comic book creators. And oh, you perfect. do all three. See? <laughs> Yeah, see, it's like as a it's a the pyramid of all previous guests just tip up to the very top is Dan Abdo right at the top. See, well, so. downhill come, so. <laughs> <laughs> we connected through uh, um, the the Kids Comic Unites uh, group. Also, too serendipitously enough, around that time, it's like the stars were aligning. But my daughter brought home the the book Barb the Last Berserker read that and i said that name looks really familiar and then i said that is the same dan that i that i've uh, that i've already like virtually met on online through that kids comic unite we read through that book and to my great happiness and surprise there was also a second book that just came out correct yeah that's right just well it came out in um last in october last october right so it's not it's yeah so the third book is actually hot off like right on its heels the third book is coming out this spring the okay spring or the summer i always get all the all the release dates mixed up in my head but third book is coming out soon talk to us a little bit about as as we mentioned at the beginning of the show you're the co-creator it's a, it's you and you have your 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 best friend growing up and that you worked at that you guys got together you were you were stuck in you were stuck in the back room in the arts in the in the art the, the high end part of the of the art department you started working from there you guys kind of like hit it off and you've good, been basically inseparable ever since correct yeah yeah so we actually both grew up in montpelier and we met in montpelier high um yeah we met like as you were saying in the um the independent art room which was <laughs> like a broom closet that like, you know, um, kids who were just like drawn on their own. We had a great art teacher who, whose name was Barb, Barb Austin Hutchins. And she let um, kids who just wanted to like do their own thing. They could go back there and just draw and make comics and, and create things. And so, yeah, so we were drawing comics back in high school. And then Jason, he was a year older than me. He ended up going to RISD and he was like, you got to go. It's so fun. Like you have to come. So um, I kind of followed him there and then we just kind of kept on working together. Just like, just never stopped writing and making work together. And after college, we um, both kind of got into the animation game and we started like pitching shows. We would like mm. come up with show ideas and pitch those and had some success there. And kind of just, it's like, we're constantly doing new things like, you know, animation writing comics but like we're just we love working together so we've just been just keep been keeping it up right and and also too for for everybody out there just so dan and jason are yes i you, you might recognize the name they are also the ones that made the famed colace commercial so that's <laughs> I still get messages about the Colace commercial. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. It's like still on. It's still on TV. It's so funny. I know. It's a. It's, yeah. That's a. It's a brilliant commercial. See right there. <laughs> so you guys start. Then you guys. You you jumped into animation and you did that for a bit. And so how did you? Was it a a, a natural transition or was it a very specific transition to say, let's go in to start making some. Uh, some kids books um it was it was really natural and in, in fact it feels like maybe we should have done it a lot earlier um mm. it's like our whole thing has always been kind of like coming up with ideas for stories and so for a really long time we were like these stories need to be animated shows like we created a show called rocket Mon rocket monkeys which right. um uh it aired it was mostly in canada it was like a canadian production company canadian animation company that made it and then teletoons which is a canadian network financed most of it but it did play on nicktoons and really played all over the world on different networks but um so that like we had some experience in television there and then we kind of like sold some other like did some pilots and, and did stuff like that and the whole time we were doing that we were 
animating and directing animation for commercials, like for that college job and like other, you know, right. other commercial work. Um, part of creating work, like creating stories for animation is creating pitch books. You know, it's like you're like coming up with characters and story ideas and all this stuff. And like we just pour like our souls into these pitch books. You know, it's like we would just try to make these amazing, amazing things. And so finally we were, and then if the show doesn't go or if like the pilot doesn't go, no one sees it, right? It's right. like this thing that just sits on your shelf. So we were like, let's just, we were coming up with this new story idea and we were like, let's make a comic. And like, that will be the pitch book, you know? And it's like something just for, just so we can like, we, um, I'm a big fan of the um, MOCA Comic Arts Festival, the Museum of Comic and Cartooning Arts yeah. in, uh, in New York. Like I go to that, I would go to that every year. And so we were like, we'll do it for that. We'll just like rent a table and we'll make this comic of this idea that we had already been like bouncing around, you know? And so it had a great response. You know, it's like we like sold, a, it was just a black and white. We actually had it printed up at Minuteman Press here in Montpelier. Mm -hmm. And this was like the first like incarnation of Barb. Um, but it was really, really fun. And it was like, it was just a great experience. And, you know, some people um, saw it and eventually made its way to Simon and Schuster. And they were like, do this, like do what you did in this black and white comic for 250 pages and in color. And mm -hmm. it's like, well, it's a book. So um, mm -hmm. that was kind of like our road to graphic novels and comics. I'm really curious also too about the world building aspect of what you created for Barb. So did you and did you and Jason actually create the entire meta plot out? Like, do you know? Uh, I mean, you don't have to you give details, but do you know? Is there is there a certain number of books to this, or and do you already have a master meta plot already marked out? Um. So. We kind of had the idea for like the first, like this arc that's happening right now, that was kind of figured out. It didn't shake out exactly how we thought it was going to. So we thought that um, we would wrap it up in two books. And so when we wrote the second book, it was like, there was just so much in it that they were like, mm. we can do, this could be two books. The second okay. book can be two books. So like right now, the arc that we're in, which is kind of like the witch head arc, it's like witch head is the big villain that they're battling. That mm -hmm. wraps up in the third book. And we actually just started working on the fourth book. Um, and that is a whole new, that's actually going to be a standalone story. It's like that's okay. going to be one self-contained story. Um, and I think that, oh, but I'm not positive. I'm not sure. It's like we were. Our thinking is like, oh, maybe we can do a couple books that are like self-contained standalone stories, you know? Um, but there is something to, <laughs> I feel like there's something to like the Barb world that like it like kind of, it wants to be these like fantasy epics, you know? <laughs> like it wants to be these like sprawling stories. So I don't know, we'll kind of see what happens, I think. Right. Because it's it's interesting. I was like, I was watching, um, I was checking out the Kids Comic Unite uh, conversation you had there about eight months ago and they didn't mention the issues of continuity making sure that everything looks the same as you go through there now when it comes to that world building aspect do you now do you must do you have like a developmental editor or somebody that comes in that says actually this isn't how this works or this isn't this how the like the science behind like the snot cannons or something like that like do you actually have people that do you actually have you know people that check the yeah. book before it goes to publish like that so we have like there's kind of a team of editors like we have, and there, we have amazing editors at simon and schuster right. working with kendra levine and then also chloe foglia uh who is she's actually another uh RISD friend she's a book designer but she's kind of also been helping to edit this and then we have tom daly who uh puts lay, lays out the book he also kind of mm. adds an editorial eye uh, there's even more people than that. It really is a team effort. But like continuity is our enemy. It's like we are not right. in continuity. Um, but like they they are like on top of it because kids are on top of it. When the armband is on the wrong thing, or like, you know, two books ago we said that like the portal to Shadonia was in, in this place. It like still needs to be in that place. You know, it's right. like all that stuff really matters. And I feel like we've gotten a lot better at it. You know, it's like before kind of like digging into book four. Like I just went through and like read all the books again. So it's like, okay, it's like now I know where, you know, where everything is. And we're really into like maps and diagrams and like we do a lot of that kind of fun stuff. So it's like, we actually, we kind of have a nice um, 
we have a little bit of like a breadcrumb trail that I can go back and like see where everything is. Kids are way smarter today than than we were when we were kids at that age. 100%. Like, do, do is there something where you have to actually like get into more in depth of like politics, governments, like you know laws, um, like magic systems? Like, how deep do you have to go when you're making like an an epic like Barb? Yeah, well, it's definitely like one thing that I've noticed is that like we'll often just like throw out little details here and there, you know, just for fun, just to like kind of create this like rich, like visually interesting and like, you know, an interesting story. But like kids are like, well, like what happened to Patch's eye? Like what <laughs> happened to Barb's dad? Like what happened? Like it's like they want to know, like they want all these threads to have like right. to go somewhere, you know? Right. So it's like, but it, but I love it too, because it's like, it just keeps, the world just keeps like unraveling. It just keeps getting bigger right. and bigger and bigger. And like, one thing that's really fun is like in every book, we add a new map, like a new map of a city or a new map of like, you know, and it's just like, and like going into those maps, it's like, we're filling in all these details and making all this stuff. And it just keeps like getting larger and larger. It's, it's, right. it's super fun. Like the third book we go to pork chops town where he grew up um Yettyburg, <laughs> Yettysburg <laughs> um and just like you kind of figure out you kind of find out all about like pork chops family and like how like you know their culture and like it's it's a it's a it's a really fun world to play in like I really I really right. love working there how close or how territorial are are you and Jason to the story say for instance if somebody wanted to say hey um you know like you say I want to write a fan fiction of what happened to you know barb's you know grandparents or something along those lines do you, is there some level of like with even with like the publisher could say hey would you mind if another author wrote a piece of this world hypothetically speaking uh, that's a really good question um i mean so like people send in their artwork all the time which i love i think it's yeah. so cool and another thing that has been happening a lot is people are sending in like costumes that they're making um, and it's just like, I love it. Like the more that people want to play in this world, like I am so into it. And like lots of shadow blades, like dads and moms are making shadow blades for their daughters. <laughs> it's so cool. Or, or like the tiara, like headband things. Um, I haven't seen anyone like trying to like create some fan fiction, but like, I'm gonna go for it. You know what I mean? Like, right. I think that would be great. Um, in terms of someone else, like actually making a book in this world, I feel like that would be tricky. Um, right. Like, I think, I don't know. It's like, it does feel kind of like this is like, we're really close to it. Like, we really right. care about it and are like, it is kind of like our, you know, our baby in some sense. Um, but I don't know. Never say never. It's like, who, who knows? You know, it's like, I like the idea for this world. I like it to grow. Like, I think that's that's something that I'm excited about. Like, I would always like to keep my eye on it and make sure that like it feels especially barb herself like i don't want someone writing something for barb that isn't like in character you know right um yeah. but like um but the more that this world grows and the more people that can enjoy it i'm like yeah let's do it right now this you released this i think you you first pitched this idea back in 2016 correct was the barb one or was it the blueberry and pancake was the 2016 one? I think that was blueberry and pancakes. I think Barb okay. was more like 2019, 2018. Okay. And then right. the first Barb book came out in 2020. Yeah. And the second one, no, maybe the first one came out in 21 and the second one came out in 22. Right. The third one's coming out in 23. Because you mentioned you and Jason worked really closely. You, you basically, you, you write and draw it together. And, and it takes a very discriminating eye to even kind of tell the difference between the styles because you've two been working together for so long. Um, I think you mentioned in an interview that, you know, maybe like was you draw a better foot than Jason or something like that. Like you guys are like always joking back and forth. Who can draw this better than that? Did you always work close together, like in the same room together? And then, or do you've always been working separately, like from a distance? So we used to be right next to each other, shoulder to shoulder. So like right. when we were both like, so we both lived in Brooklyn for forever for like, like I was there for 18 years or something like that. Um, right. And and we were animation directors. We are still animation directors for this company called Hornet Inc., which is like kind of yeah. a cool like boutique an animation production house in New York. 
Um, and so when we were in New York living there, we were, our desks, you know, we were really next to each other. Um, and so then when we, when I went to Vermont and Jason went to New Jersey and we were working remote, it really, we didn't skip a beat. It's like, mm. we're, we're on the phone with each other every day and it's really all through, um, Google drive. It's like, we're typing in Google Drive. We use Google Slides to like put our artwork up there. And it's nice because it's like, I can throw a JPEG up there and then he can take it down and draw on top of it and put it back up there. So it is like this like live collaboration right. that's always happening. So, um, but I mean, there are things like sometimes it's like, you know, it is like, we do have different, especially in the, I feel like in the writing, sometimes it's more pronounced, but like we see, so, we'll see it a different way. So it's like, mm. he might write, Thing and I'm like, I think it should be more like this. And then I'll take it and rewrite it or mess with it. And then he'll take that and rewrite it, mess with it. Or, you know, but sometimes too, it's like, he'll write something and I'm like, this is like, perfect. Let's just, let's just go with this, you know? So it's, it is this back right. and forth, but there's really almost no ego in it. It's all like about trying to make something that's going to be funny and cool and exciting. And that's going to like, you know, emotionally affect our, our readers. Do you like when you guys, when you, you set up, like you set up your table and everything, do you actually have them on a webcam and you guys are just like talking to each other or is it more like a, a texting back and forth as you're working? It's both like usually kind of at the beginning of the day, we'll actually call each other and we just have each other on speakerphone. And it's okay. like, I'm just drawing on my monitor here and he's drawing on his monitor and we're just talking and like, what did you watch last night? How was your weekend? And all that just kind of like at the office, you know? Right. Um, yeah. And it's also really nice too, because it's like drawing comics is kind of this like lonely, like solitary existence. So it's like talking to someone is, is really nice. Um, I'm just kind of, I'm kind of curious about how that conversation went when you said, Hey, listen, we're going to move away. Was it like, don't worry, we'll still work with each other. Like technology is so much better now. Like how did that, there uh, cause you guys were living together for so long. There must've yeah. been that that conversation that would have been you know looking at it from like the dan and jason if there was a movie about you that would be a scene in the movie where the two of you decide to not let be together close well, by. totally no i totally remember <laughs> i was like <laughs> well so what happened was my wife Lindsay, and i we had been talking about coming back to vermont for a couple of years like we had like kind of like we're just fantasizing about it and just like really wanted to get out of new york and come back to vermont and yeah. then a friend here who was like oh we have a neighbor they're going to New Zealand for a year. So they need someone to look after their house. Like, why don't you guys come up and just try it out? So when I first told Jason, I was like, it's just for a year. Like we're just going <laughs> to try it out. You know, like I, I we actually have a place in Brooklyn that um, we're actually in the process of selling now, but I was like, we're going to keep our place in Brooklyn. It's like, we're going to, um, this is just like, you know, we're just going to see how it feels. And then like, of course, once we came up, we were like, we're never going back. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, but it was like, so it did feel kind of like low commitment and like, you know, a little bit like it wasn't super scary. Um, right. And at that same time, Jason was actually moving from, well, no, a couple of years before that, Jason had moved from Brooklyn to New Jersey. So the, even though that's like just across the river, it does kind of feel like it's like, it's farther away. It's harder to come into the city. It's like, you know, it's like we were kind of like probably you know, seeing each other four days a week or three days a week, you know, in the office. Right. So it's like, was kind of like this like natural progression. It's like our, we both were having families and kids were growing and stuff like that. So. Right. From that, when you two physically were separated, how did that, how did that adjustment happen for technology wise? And how did that work to be able to share ideas? As you mentioned before, you would, you talk to each other on the phone a bit at the beginning of each day. Well, it, I mean, it's interesting because that was actually me coming to Vermont was actually the real impetus for us to move from animation direction, like solely pretty much is what we were doing all the time into books. Oh, that wow. was like, okay. There was part of me, like when I first came up to Vermont, like it was before COVID. So it was like, I didn't know if the remote thing was going to fly. So right. I was like, I was like, I need something else. Like we need, I need like us, like another thing that like can be, you know, like an income stream. So before I came to Vermont, I was like already talking to literary agents and stuff like that, like kind of like getting our, my stuff out there and getting our stuff out there. Um, and then it, it all kind of happened at the same time where it was like, came up to Vermont, kind of sold some ideas, 
started working on those like there's always like kind of a little bit of a dead time between like you sell something and when you actually like have to start working on it so in that time we would like come up with something else sell another idea so it kind of feels like it was the move it was the separation that like was like oh we really got to like get this book thing going and now it's like the book thing is like it's our main focus like we love it so much and it's like like i was saying earlier like it felt like oh my god why why didn't we do this 10 years ago it's like it's it's so direct you're there's so many less gatekeepers um it's like you can see kids like pick up your book and read it you know which is like totally amazing i just it never gets old like i love it so much like i love right. talking to kids about the books and like i don't know it's just a total blast it's so fun right when you put the book together how much how much did you have for the background of understanding how storyboarding works and how that how much did that actually help you with your experience on creating your kids comic um I think it helps a lot, actually. I mean, I think one thing I think just like psychologically it helps because it's like we're not afraid of like making lots of drawings. You know, mm -hmm. it's like when you're storyboarding, you're just like whipping out drawings super fast and like, oh, that's no good. That's not right. Like, that's the wrong angle. Like, no problem. Just do another one, you know? So it's like when we're thumbing our stories, it really is kind of like in some ways like another draft of the writing, you know? It's like, and then this happens. And it's just these really rough, loose thumbs like you would see someone would do for like, if they're storyboarding a, uh, you know, a show or a film or something. Right. When when you decided, when you and Jason decided, let's make you know Barb the Last Berserker. It, there's a similar style to Blueberry and Pancakes, but I mean, it looks different than say like your Bear and Bird film. Like, how did you did you have to make a, a very distinct decision on what the style is going to look like for Barb the Last Berserker? Um, no, I would say Barb the Last Berserker is like our house style. Like that's like okay. how Jen and Jason draw. Um, I think the Blueberry and Pancakes, it's funny, like I feel like Blueberry and Pancakes, you can actually see quite a bit of evolution from like the first book to the fifth book that just came out in January. Um, cause it's like it, when the first one came out, I was kind of like, and I think this kind of spills over from the animation, from the advertising world a little bit. Cause I was kind of like, oh, this is going to be a kid's book. It's got to look like a kid's book. So right. I was like, we'll do less line work and it'll be big graphic shapes and stuff like that, you know? But then like, as we just kept on making more and more stories and more and more books, it just kind of, I think, evolved into something that is more just like, this is how Dan and Jason draw. Because mm. like, that's one thing in the advertising world, at least kind of the way that like our career went, it was like companies and um, agencies would like come to Hornet and they're like, okay, we're, we're looking for something in this style. Like, do you have a director that can like do this style? Mm -hmm. And so like, we were constantly working in different styles, you know? So it's like, it's kind of easy for us to be like, oh no, we can switch it up a little bit. And like, we can make it more like this and more like that. Looking at of your other work, I'm, I am kicking myself very confused on why Randy and Fox is not an animated show. Oh, that's, I'm so glad you got to see Randy and Fox. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I think, like, I think Randy and Fox, and you mentioned Bear and Bird earlier, too. I think both of those, yeah. like, turned into Blueberry and Pancakes, right? It's like, there's definitely, like, has all that, like, um, like, Randy and Fox were constantly, like, building all this crazy stuff, but, like, building contraptions and, like, zip lines. And, all those. and that's totally Barry in Blueberry and Pancakes. He's, like, the inventor. He's build, he builds a new thing every, um, every book. But um, um, I'm psyched that you got a chance to see that. Um, that was a blast. I had we had so much fun working on that. And you know, it's like working in animation. Like that's still like in our sights. Like it's still something that we want to do. It's like we love animated stories. The the, the challenge with animation. There's like too many cooks in the kitchen. There's way too many gatekeepers going on, and it's just hard. That like you said, all the pointed edges just get rounded down. So with that said, it's a, the, there is more freedom in the sense of what you can get when you're making a book, but there's still, you still have guardrails though, right? When it comes to writing books. Absolutely. I mean, it's like, I mean, we definitely do. I mean, and we work so far have worked kind of almost exclusively like in the kids realm, you know, right. like blueberry and pancakes is really for like emerging readers. It's for kids who like maybe have never read a comic book before. It's like their, you know, their first graphic novel. And then right. Barb's a little bit older, like, you know, 
like third to like sixth grade is kind of like we like to say it's like that's kind of the sweet spot but to be totally honest i mean it's like we don't really let that uh, that kind of comes at the end i guess it's like when we're coming up with a story and we're like figuring it out it's like we kind of just make the thing that we want to make and then we're like uh this might be too weird or this might be too like complicated like you know but like when we're just like writing stuff and like laying out pages and drawing stuff it's it's really for me and jason it's really for like something that we want to watch or read right was there anything that you do work with your agent on? Was there anything in the book that like, no, we really, that is really important. This is a really important part of it. Is there any like that banter back and forth that you would have with the publishers on some things? Yeah, there always is. And it's interesting that you mentioned our agent because she is like, she's a, a really important part of that. Like uh, right. her name is Erica Silverman and she works for uh Stimola literary agency. And it's like, she's not just like making deals. Like she's like reading our work and she's like, oh, I think this might work better or this might like, you know, or like, or she knows also too, she, like she'll be like, oh, the market needs this. Like, this is something that you should focus on. Like there's an empty space in the market for this, which like that does like kind of inform like what the next thing we're going to, we're going to make, you know? Um, right. But yeah, no, there's lots of that stuff. Like, and, <laughs> and it's funny too, because because it's so intimate, right? It's like, we're just working with a couple editors and one agent. It's like, it doesn't feel, um, I feel like personally, like I get less defensive. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like when someone like, cause sometimes it's like, you're getting notes from someone that you've never met before, like in television. And there's part of me that's like, I'm making this. Like, why are you telling me what I'm making? Like, I know like, <laughs> I'm the one who's making it. I know how, what it should be like. But like, when it's just like four people talking, you know, on like a Zoom chat, it's like, they're just trying to make it the best thing that it can be. And like, it's, I mean, it's all, I think it's like always good not to be defensive and to like listen to someone and like, you know, but um, it's easier to not be defensive when it's just people that you know and trust and like, you know that they get it, you know? Is there anything that is like definitively yours or like definitively Jason's like, is there a joke or something or a writing style or something in there that the people that know you two saying, oh yeah, that was, totally dan that's a dan thing right there um i don't know that's a really good question i mean i i gotta be honest like i am a huge fan of jason patterson like i think that the way he draws is so awesome and like he is definitely like one of the funniest he's got like this amazing comedic mind it's like we are just joking and cracking each other up all the time so it's like I really trust him. You know what I mean? It's like when he comes up with a joke and like, we're laughing about it. It's like, let's put it in. It's funny, you know? Um, and it's like, he also, I don't know. It's like, I think Jason brings a lot of heart to it. I, I, I think that's really true. I think sometimes like I'm a little bit more of the like, um, like big conceptual, like, oh, this is going to be this, like, you know, I don't know. We're working on a story right now. And it's like, I really want it to be about like dads and sons and all these complicated feelings between dads and sons. And Jason's like, yeah, but like the dad's really doing his best. <laughs> like there's a lot of like optimism and heart to it. And like, you know, it's like it's a, it's really important. Like I think it's a real balance, you know, it's like it's 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 great. It's a really great right. real partnership. How does this work? So Barb the Berser Barb the Berserker, is that IP like owned by you and Jason, or is there something with Simon and Schuster where they have, you know, rights to that as well? Yeah, so that's like another, um, that was like another new thing for us, like moving from television into publishing. So right. Simon and Schuster owns the right to, owns the book rights for as long as it's in print. Okay. So as long as they're, and it's the same thing with Blueberry, Man, Blueberry and Pancakes, as long as they're printing books, they have, they own the publishing rights. Um, but we own the IP and we own all the motion rights, all the, stage rights all games all that stuff so it's like and like there has been like some you know interest from like you know animation and stuff like that which is exciting so it's like we're able to talk about that and like and you know and kind of explore that side of it while still doing the publishing stuff like that not being affected you've been very successful in in, in in publishing a book has there ever been any like passion projects that you and jason have that you might think you know what it's 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 2023 we could probably self-publish if we so choose 
but are you but you have a really good agent you wouldn't do that anyway then would you no we i mean i we definitely would i mean that's like yeah. how, you know it's like we're working on a thing right now that um you know we definitely want erica to take out and to sell but like right. if she does like we'll just make it like we'll at least we'll make like part of it you know and right. do the same thing that we did with barb like go to comic cons and comic book festivals and just get it out there because it's like I mean, why not? At least it's like then, you know, it's not that much of an investment. You know what I mean? It's right. like, it's like, you know, a couple months, a couple hundred bucks, print up some comic right. books, like, and, and get it out there. So, um, no, I think like the self publishing, I mean, the whole, my whole career has all been about making something. It's like we've done lots of like asking permission and like pitching ideas. And, and sometimes that goes, but like, when you make something and like put it out into the world, somebody responds to it. Like it might not be the thing that you like, might not be like the home run that you're hoping, but it's like somebody is going to, you know, mm. I don't know. I feel like that's definitely the way to go. How do you make that balance between this is a story I really want to tell, or this is a story I think that's really going to sell. How do you balance that? Yeah, it is. It, it is a balance. I mean, it is like we, like there is part of me that wants to do the like, <laughs> the Dan and Jason version of Breaking Bad, you know, they're like, let's do a story about a villain who doesn't learn anything. <laughs> um, but it's like, but I feel like that's going to be, it's like, I need a much larger nest egg. Like, I need a much larger, you know, cushion to like that, do, do that kind of experiment. So it's like, that's really what it is. It's like, yes, we have to keep on selling things and we have to keep on like, you know, making something out there that people want to read. But Hopefully, eventually, it's like, well, we will be in a position where we can just experiment and, like, try things. And, you know, I would love to do stuff, like, for adults, like, grown-up stuff, right. definitely. And, like, and some stuff that we're, that's coming up is going to be still for kids, but is going to be, like, aesthetically darker. Like, we're kind of, like, going into, like, a more, like, halloween like, creepy vibe, which I think will be really fun. Um, right. So, it's like, there's, yeah, lots to explore and, and play around with. Because... Hmm your artist and your writer do you is there anything that you would actually just do you always see yourself um, illustrating your own work or would you ever be in a position where you would illustrate somebody else's work or write something that somebody else would illustrate so we just illustrated this book called tiny spoon versus little fork okay and so this is the first thing that we've done that was we didn't write so it was written by Constance Lombardo, who's this really great author. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just this like, and it's really like a, I mean, it's like almost like a children's book for like babies, like toddlers. You know? <laughs> um, and it's just about this fork and the spoon who like are like kind of competing for who gets to feed the baby. But it was, <laughs> it was so fun. Like it was like, it's full of like comedy and like physical comedy and it's like really silly and like, you know, so like we definitely, we love just like, pure illustration and uh, there's something kind of freeing too about like doing somebody else's story you know right. it's like you're not like all caught up in it emotionally you're just trying to make something that's like you know grab the viewer and like you know just kind of plus the story as, as well as you can and but the, and on the other side of that like we also like the idea of writing a story and then handing it off like especially mm -hmm. if, if we get to if we got an opportunity to work with an artist that we really love um, I feel like that could also be like a really fun, satisfying experience. Like seeing what someone else brings to your work is, can be really exciting. Right. Yeah. Perfect. So, so listen, so Dan, if people want to learn more about you and Jason, what's the, what's the good place that they could go to? Um, yeah. So like we're okay at social media, like we're not the best, but Instagram is probably the best. And it's Dan and Jason, wait, at Dan and Jason, at sign okay. Dan and Jason all spelled out. Um, and then we also have a, uh, we also have, um, Facebook and a website, which is in desperate need of updating. Um, <laughs> but it's like, yeah, but I'm, you know, one, I'm so happy to be on this podcast. And like, one thing that we're trying to do is like, just be more active and more present, like in the comics and artists community. So it's like, um, like, yeah, if anyone ever wants to reach out to us or talk to us, we do lots of school visits. You know, we work with um, Cliff, the Children's Literacy Foundation. It's like we love mm. like getting out there and like meeting kids and authors and artists and just like, you know, mixing it up. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Perfect.
Well, let, listen, Dan, so make sure like, yeah, you and Jason come back on when you uh, get your third book out. This has been great. I, it's so been a great you. honor talking to you. It was such a pleasure. This was a total great. We loved it. Well, yeah. We got the sixth Blueberry and Pancakes book comes out next year. The third bar book comes out this spring, and then we've got more stuff coming out for that. So anytime. We love it. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much.